triple expansion steam engine that needs some attention. This is part two of the introduction. Fixing some small problems to start with and fitting some proper cylinder drain taps. Then I removed one of the useless roll pins which was surprisingly difficult to do. I've had one suggestion so far as to what this thing is stuck out of the side of the intermediate steam chest. But I don't think it's for a simpling valve, I think it has a simpler purpose. But I may be wrong about that. One of the studs on the high pressure cylinder cover was a bit short and it was actually leaking. So I removed the nut, then I removed the short stud. Now I've removed the stud, what I propose to do is stick the nut to the stud using some Loctite 603. This is high power retainer. And it basically turns the nut and the stud into a special bolt that looks like a nut on a stud. Quite simple when you think about it. Before I refit this special nut on a stud bolt, I need to give it plenty of time for the Loctite 603 to cure. One thing about this engine that I really personally hate are the steam locomotive type drain cocks or drain taps. I can't use the word cocks in the videos, particularly if I write it in text form, because the YouTube algorithm does not know what a drain cock is, and it thinks it's something else. This is the first one I'm removing, and I'm a bit premature with this, but I'm going to fit a proper drain tap or drain cock. Fitted in place, of course, with Loctite 542 thread sealant. The holes in the cladding are a bit strange. They're actually too big, and they're not quite in the right place, so I'm going to use some shim washers. This is what I normally use to make sure that the fittings are in the right position. And for this first drain tap, I had to use two shim washers. Here's a very useful tip when you fit these things. Use your scriber point to hold them in the right position so you can rotate them to screw them into the hole. It's surprisingly difficult to hold them just with your fingers in the right position. Here's a clear view of the two shim washers. Both are a different thickness, but together they're just right to allow the part to end up in the right position, like this. I need to contact my friend Chris Lockwood at 21st Century Steam to buy some more of these. I'm just fitting the new drain taps to the top row and they do look much better than these because these are okay underneath a steam locomotive cylinder and they're going to go into my box of drain cocks along with quite a lot of other bits and pieces and from my experience you can never have too many of these. Here's the last one going in place. The cladding was badly stained and it wouldn't wipe off with any solvent and I even struggled using Scotch-Brite. It's not an issue though because I'm going to paint this cladding black as I don't particularly like this colour. And who knows, in the fullness of time when I start the series for real, I may even get rid of the grey paint and paint it with Great Western Railway Green. When you first see this engine, it looks really good, but the deeper that you look, the more you realise, or the more I realise, that there's quite a lot of work needs doing to it. As you've seen, I've managed to get the engine to basically run in this condition, but just look at it, just about everything that can be loose is. It's going to take a few episodes to put this engine right, but I'm not complaining because I like a challenge, and this engine will end up in really good condition. In this clip, I'm pointing out a few problem areas using my scriber. Initially, when I look at this, I think that the forked end of the connecting rod and the crossheads will probably need reaming out for a larger size of pin. But I'll only decide about this once I take the engine apart. I've slowed down this clip so you can see just how much movement there is on all of the parts. It's a good job it's a steam engine really, they're the only engines I know that will run in such a bad condition. The only thing is, I would suspect that once I start to work on the engine and fix everything, more problems will probably occur. But you'll have to wait to see what happens because I'm not going to start a series about repairing this just yet, I have far too many things to do. I've also got quite a lot of musical work in the studio to complete. I like to be busy, but this is getting to be a little bit overpowering at times. This part of the job was very difficult and really annoying, and someone's been here before me. I'm using a pair of pliers to withdraw the roll pin. The chunk out of the drop arm is something that's happened before I even got the engine. I should be able to repair that, though. There are ways and means of doing it. To successfully remove this damaged roll pin, the method I used is shown here. 
First of all, I ground off the end of the roll pin so you can see the hole in it. In a moment, I'm going to damage a twist drill to show just how hard these roll pins are. It's best to forget the idea of drilling them out. The steel is far too hard, the drill gets too hot, the point softens and that's the end of it. However, now I can use a centre punch in the hole. And even though the roll pin would not pull out this way, it's definitely moving in the other direction. Once I got it part of the way out, it was a very easy job to lift it out entirely with a small pair of angled pliers. I'm temporarily fitting a cut down taper pin. I don't have the reamers or the pins to repair this properly at the moment. Having a look over the engine generally, it's not too bad, it's a bit grubby in places and one or two of the nuts are not really where they're supposed to be on the studs, but all in all, it's quite good. There's some cloth of some sort stuck underneath the baseboard, and here I'm removing it, and believe me, it was really well stuck to the baseboard. This is the best I could get it, I will remove the rest on the belt sander once I remove the engine from the baseboard. If you remove this plug, so that the exhaust from the high pressure cylinder does not operate the intermediate cylinder, it's much easier to set the high pressure cylinder by ear. So you don't need to remove the inlet and exhaust piping from the other side. There's also a blanking plug in the low pressure cylinder for setting the intermediate cylinder by ear. Probably that's it, I'm not sure. If anyone is 100% certain what this is for, please let me know. Over now to my Boxford lathe, I'm going to make a connector so I can pipe in the compressed air to the engine without having to use the pistol grip thing. I'm using a small piece of quite large brass hexagon. I've faced across the front and centre drilled it. Now I'm drilling it tapping size for 7 16 by 26 threads per inch. A final clean up by running the tool across the front. The next part of the job is to drill this piece of brass bar, which I then silver soldered into the piece of hexagon and then machined it to a specific shape so I can put a tie wrap around the pipe to keep it in place when it's under pressure. The idea being that it's much easier now to start the engine. Famous last words, I know, I'll improvise. To support the intermediate cylinder's expansion link, I used some tie wraps linked together, and as you can see, it's made all the difference. The engine's easier to start, and it runs much better. The oil residue from the cylinders is about the right colour, so things are looking up. What I'm going to do though is disconnect the water pump and the vacuum pump. That way I can hear what the engine sounds like because the vacuum pump makes quite a loud noise. Listen to the difference when I run it this time. There was quite a lot of slop in the hand wheel, so I removed the centre nut, tightened the hand wheel a bit further onto the shaft, and then replaced the nut. This reversing shaft isn't correct, you can actually overwind it, it needs some limiters fitting at each end. You can tell when you've wound the wheel a little bit too far because the engine starts to sound rough. At the moment I can't really reverse the engine because the nylon tie wrap is putting pressure in the opposite direction on the expansion link arm. I think the first job I will do when I start the series for real is fix the reversing shaft, starting by rebushing the mountings to make the shaft a tighter fit in the supports. I'll stop talking for a while and run the engine. I'll be back at the end. I varied the amount of pressure that I fed to the engine, and it did respond, albeit a bit slowly. Make sure that you stay healthy, and as always, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. 
and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.